hello, hello. This is Elect Lady Vanessa Dalton, and welcome to another True Tuesday. Now, Minister Eric is coming to close out August, so by now you should know who you are. And I know he gave you some great points. If you don't know who you are, you can look back at your notes and go by that. But go around the house and let everyone know that True Tuesday is on. Go get on your iPad, your laptop, whatever you use to take notes. Don't forget your Bible. And let's get into the Word. Good evening, everyone. Uh, glad to be before you again. Uh, we're going to start in a quick word of prayer and then we'll get into this lesson. Uh, Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity to be before the people again, Lord, to be here for another True Tuesday. Lord, we thank you for the word that you've left us to, to study. And Lord, I just ask you to help me to give them something they can use and they can put into practice. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for me. I thank you all, all you've done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, we're finishing up. This is the fifth week and who you are. And this one... You are the people of God. So we're going to start in 1 Peter 2 and 10, which says, For once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is one of the most powerful descriptions in the whole of Scripture of who the Christian is. And it's important and powerful as anything I've said so far. Now the Hebrew word for people in this verse is laos, and Strong's that's the G2992. And it means a people, people group, tribe, nation, all those who are of the same stock and language. What that means for us is that once we have believed in Christ with our hearts, confessed him with our mouths, and are saved, we become a people. We become a tribe. We become a family. We become a, a group that speaks the same language. And that language that we speak should be led by the Holy Spirit's prompting. We should be speaking the word and a word of life into people, a word of encouragement. So we should have that same language, the language that God speaks to us. In Ephesians 2, 10 through 13, Paul writes this, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Therefore remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time separate from God, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were firm, formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We have gone from being lost and alone to not having a hope, to being out there with no God to lean on, nobody to take care of us, nobody to shield us, nobody to love us. We've gone from that to being a family, to being part of God's family, to speak in that same spiritual language that he's given us. We have been shown mercy by the Lord by his laying his life down for us and taking it up again, which allows us to have an eternal future. It is in Christ Jesus that we who were formerly afar off, as the scripture says, we were totally estranged from God, we were totally separated, we were not looking for him, but he was looking for us. And he gave us a way to come to him. And now through the blood of Christ we have been brought near to him. And that's a wonderful thing. That's a powerful thing to understand that even while we were in our sins, God was willing to save us and wanted to save us. It wasn't like he was just going to let us out there to not have a way of escape. He provided a way of escape. And when we come to him and, and just accept what he's offering, we become a part of his family and he brings us close to him. In Titus 3, 5, and 7, Paul wrote, He saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we will be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That's wonderful grace and mercy, y'all. Because of that wonderful grace and mercy, we are saved. And that's that, that same grace and mercy allows us to be the people of God. He's made us into a people group. We like to break ourselves down into racial categories, black, white, Italian, Spanish. We like to, we do that. But there's only two real people groups. There are the people of God and there are the people of the devil. By him laying his life down, 
picking it up again. And by us having faith in what he did, we get to move from one category to the other. We get to move from being people of the devil to being people of God, and that's a wonderful thing. And it's not because of anything that was in us. It's not because we were smarter or better or we knew better. It's because God offers that same thing to everyone. And we followed the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And I'm so glad that I did, and for you out there that have, I'm so glad that you have. And for you that haven't, today's the day that you can follow him, that you can make him the Lord of your life. That you can confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ came as a man, that he died on a cross for you, and that three days later he rose and he's ascending to heaven and he's coming back to gather his own. If you believe that, you're no longer out there in the world by yourself without God, without a family. You have, the fa you have a worldwide family, the family of Christ, and that family will embrace you and love you. So take the opportunity to join that family today. So, I'm concluding this message this month, and I thank you for your time and your patience all month. I just want to remember, urge you to remember just who you are in Christ. You're a living stones that are forming the temple of God. You're a chosen generation. You're a holy nation, a peculiar people, a people that have been set apart for God's own service, for his use, to be his. He sees you as special. That's who you are. You're a royal priesthood. And finally, you are the people of God through Christ Jesus. So remember who you are. Don't let anybody detract from that. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not. That's who you are, and I want you to remember that. So as we get ready to finish this out, I want to invite you to come visit us here at True Word Fellowship, 310 West Meadow Road in Eden, North Carolina. On Sunday mornings, we start at 9 with our Sunday school service. We have a 10 o'clock worship service. You're always welcome here. We would love to see you. We'd love to have you come visit us for any service, and we just hope that you get an opportunity to come visit us. Now we're going to go out in the world of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this opportunity to know who we are in you, that we are new creatures, that you have transformed us into a family, that you have made us a holy nation, a holy priesthood, a royal priesthood, that we are a peculiar people, that you have called us out and set us apart for your use. Lord, let us be mindful of that. Let us walk in that in the ways that we should. Let us always walk faithfully in you. And Lord, we just thank you for your provision and for your salvation that you offer to us and given to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.